how's it going? Today I want to talk about doing a tubeless conversion on your bike. Specifically, I did it on this bike, the BMW F800GS. Why would you want to do that? Well, because fixing, fixing a puncture is so much easier when it's tubeless as opposed to having tubes. If I get a puncture in the front or the rear, I can just take a plug, uh, pull the, the object out, put the plug in, and get back on the road, air up and be back on the road. I don't have to take wheels off, I don't have to pull tubes out, put new tubes in, try to fix a tube, it just makes the overall process much, much simpler. So that was something that I wanted to do. The F800GS uh, is pretty common for the rear wheel to be converted over. It's easy to do uh, with sealing the spoke bed and putting some tape on it. The rear wheel on this has a safety bead. If you're not familiar with what a safety bead is, it's a, it's a small ledge on either side of the bead in the, the bed of the wheel itself that's supposed to prevent the wheel from coming off in the event that something happens. It keeps the bead kind of uh, to the edge. So that was a really easy conversion. Since I did the back, I wanted to also do the front uh, so that I could use plugs and to keep it uh, similar front and rear. That was really easy to do. The front doesn't have a safety bead. It's a 21 inch wheel that's uh, quite narrow, but I got it done, no problems. I've got almost 2,500 miles on this conversion to include riding um, all the way down to do the California backcountry discovery route and then my failure to complete it because of the sandy rocky sections that we got stuck in. So with that being said, th this was a really easy thing to do and I like the convenience of fixing punctures if that happens. I'm not gonna go through the whole process of how to do it. There's a number of really great videos. The one that I watched was by Dirt Nap Adventures. He converted his Africa Twin over to tubeless, both uh, rear and front, and it's a really good tutorial. I don't want to duplicate what he's already done, so if you're looking for the details of doing it, head over there and you'll see exactly the process and the materials that you need. What I'm here to say is that it was really easy to do. I've been really pleased with it. Actually pretty easy to get the tire on. It's easy to get the beads seated just with a home compressor. and. So I've been using Ride-On to do the balancing on the wheels. I put that fluid in there and it also acts as a sealant if you do get a puncture. So far I've had no problems with it. I've ran the bike at 80, 85 miles an hour on the interstate, no vibrations, um, no concerns, no head shake. Everything has been really, really good with this uh, conversion. So with the ability to be able to plug the tires, it, it makes it completely worth it. So I'll show some of the details of what I've had to do. On the front wheel, there was a couple of the spoke uh, beds that I didn't get sealed up right uh, well the first time around, so I had to find where the leak was. I found the leak using a tub of water and then just marked it, went back, pulled the old silicone out, put new silicone in, retaped it, and was able to get the front to seal. And now the front and rear tires, they'll hold air pressure um, nearly what I put in there for up to two months at a time and in that two months they might lose two to three PSI which um, my true tubeless on the R1200GS loses about the same over that period of time so it's a really good conversion. If you decide to do this conversion you have to be meticulous in ensuring each spoke hole is completely sealed. If you use the silicone tape like I did you need to make sure it is completely smoothed out over each of the spoke holes. I'm working on getting the front tire converted over to tubeless. Um, I've already had the tire on, I've already been using it in that uh, capacity. However, I discovered that two spokes uh, were leaking. This is one of them here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the video. So what I found when I uh, took the tire off and pulled the, the sealant tape off was that um, the silicone that I put on didn't quite cover the spoke. I don't know how I missed that when I uh, originally put it on but that's what happened so I pulled all the silicone out and redid it I've got the silicon tape that I'm going to put back over it and the only concern I have is that it's right next to the valve stem 
So I'll overlap it quite a bit and then cut that out and, and put it back in. I think it'll be fine. My experience with doing tubeless on mountain bikes is it's pretty easy to seal little holes like this um, and, and get them to hold. So I know it's different on a motorcycle wheel than it is a mountain bike uh, wheel, but uh, the principles are very similar. So that's what I'm getting ready to do. I've got this hole here, uh, or this spoke here that I gotta get covered up. And then this one here um, that also uh, was leaking. And I found it by doing a water bucket test, just putting the tube in there, or the, the wheel in there. Um, so I'll put some silicone tape over the top of that to help seal it. Um, so it's like a double seal over the silicone and also helps protect the silicone. Um, when you're taking tires on and off. So yeah, that's what we're getting ready to do. Hopefully that'll take care of all the issues. We'll have a sealed up front wheel and uh, we're working on tubeless. Right, got the tire put back on. Um, I run ride on in the tires. I, I'm trying this. Um, they help balance the tire so I don't have to take it in to get balanced, which is a big deal for um, riding on the roads. I wanna have a balanced tire so it's not shaking. Um, and it also made a great bead loop. I had a ton of ride-on still smashed in the tire and I wiped wiped a lot of it out but then I just rubbed that all over the bead um, when I went to put it back on and it the tire slid right on it was um, really quite easy to get it put on so now let's see if we can get some air in it there you can hear the beads pop on at 34 psi so that went on pretty easy now the trick is going to be doing the water test now the water test is just a big bucket of water i'm not going to try to film that it's just i'm going to run it around i know which spokes were leaking because i put some uh wraps on them just so i knew which one it was and then um I'll just put it back in the bucket and see if those are leaking and then I'll go around all the way around to see if any of the others are leaking as well just from being disturbed from putting a tire on and off but um, really it's a quite easy process. The rear was really easy as well it sealed up the first time it's held air no problems um, I've been really pleased with how well that went on um, I, I really don't know why more guys don't do it other than maybe they're um, concerned about doing it or, or not comfortable with it but the rear tire, that's a big deal because now I can just stick plugs in it. And uh, I'll still carry a tube with me in case something catastrophic happens and I bend a wheel and it won't hold air anymore, which is always a possibility. Now, the other reason to do this is with tubes, when you get a puncture in a tube, it tends to go flat very quickly. Um, with a tubeless tire, if you get a puncture, then it should be a slow leak and you'll be able to um, notice it. And I'm gonna put some pressure sensitive uh, tire pressure monitoring system on this that I'll have on my handlebar so I'll be able to keep track of what my tire pressure is at all times just for those purposes of, of knowing do I have a puncture or is there something going on I need to be aware of. Uh, a couple things I wanted to know I had mentioned a little bit earlier that I don't air down now um, part of that is uh, with the front tire not having the safety bead I don't want to air down and risk ripping the tire off of the wheel and these bit these bikes are big they're heavy and I tend to just plow through things. So any square edge objects is gonna hit that tire hard and I don't want it to get into the wheel. So I leave the front tire at 34 PSI. Um, I don't ride super, super aggressive stuff. So for me, it's worked great. Same with the rear, I run it around 42 PSI. I've got a really hard tire on there. No issues getting it into the wheel, but I don't air down anymore now that I'm tubeless and it's not a true tubeless wheel. So something to keep in mind if you're thinking about doing this. Trying to work these corners here. The one thing I forgot to mention is, if you're gonna do the tubeless conversion, you have to use tubeless tires. You can't just use any tire. The carcass of the tubeless tire is less porous. It's made to be ran without tubes. So don't try to use a non-tubeless and do a conversion. I think that should be the last thing I have to say about that. Okay, 
if doing the tubeless conversion on your bike is something that you're considering or interested in doing, it's easy to do in your garage. The important thing is you need to just be very meticulous about what you do with the cleaning of the wheel, getting the silicone to seal the bead, the way you put the tape on, make sure it seals up really, really well. Uh, try, put it in the water bucket to make sure that none of the spokes are leaking, that your bead isn't leaking. And it's, it's really not that complicated. I think because I was waiting for the silicone to dry, I think it took uh, two days to do a couple of hours each day and, and it, was, it was done, it was easy. Um, it makes it a lot easier getting wheels on and off when you're not having to put a tube in and make sure you don't pinch the tube in that final stage of getting the tire on, which is really great because now I can change tires real easily uh, myself. So if you have any questions about the conversion or any thoughts, please leave those in the comments uh, down below. And I hope this video was valuable to you. And um, thanks for tuning in. And I will see you out there.